Hey, want to see how easy it is to get up and running with a fuel gauge using our Model Gauge M5 Easy Max 17263 chip? Stay tuned and we'll show you. Hi, welcome to Design Shop. My name is Jason Wortham and I'm a battery product uh, definer here at Max Migrated Products. Today I'm going to be showing you the Max 17263 fuel gauging EV kit using Maxim's model gauge M5 EZ and how easy it is to get it up and running. So I have here the PC board for this EV kit. Uh, this is possibly, this is the most feature rich chip in this product family, the Max 17260 through 63. Uh, this includes an LED functionality, includes multi-cell option, and if you choose single series, it also includes uh, high side, low side current sensing. So you can wire it for high side current sensing, but only if you have 1S configuration. So it has all of those different features, and we're going to be showing how those work. Um, over here, uh, you see a schematic of a 1S application and a multi-cell application. It's showing the, uh, the LEDs wired on the four pins. You can wire up to 12 LEDs. Probably you'll typically only wire five or six because it's unnecessary to show so many LEDs to a user. There's also a push button here. So the chip will autonomously recognize when the button is pressed and show the appropriate number of LEDs according to the battery's state of charge. It's even capable of showing half brightness LEDs. So you can, if you wire for five LED bars uh, at once at 70% uh, state of charge, it'll show you three and a half are lit. So there's further details. There's, a, there's another video that you can check out on our, our uh, the homepage for this, www.maximintegrated.com slash max17263. The schematic on the right shows a multi-cell application, which you can also apply with LEDs. You don't need to, you, you can buy this chip without intending to use the LEDs. That's just one feature of interest. Um, you can do a single series application. You might buy this chip specifically because you like high side current sensing or you like multi-cell or you like the LED feature. Since this has all of them, you can kind of pick and choose. Uh, so here on the board, you have a whole bunch of options because this particular part has a bunch of features. You have uh, LED enable pins and just below that, you can see a series of 12 LEDs. I've set it up so that five LEDs are in the on position means they're connected to the schematic. The other seven LEDs are disconnected. And the chip is smart where it'll recognize the LED count. It needs to understand the LED count in order to understand how many bars represent 50%, for example. It can figure that out on its own. You don't need to tell it. So here I'm going to remove the battery and you can see the startup action where it, it does the count. It tests all the LEDs to figure out. And there you see some flicker over there on the LEDs. It figured out that there's five. This battery happens to be particularly empty. But if I press the button, it'll light up the number of LEDs that it's supposed to. Um, these other things like single series and multi-series, if you want the multi-series schematic, you should connect it this way before you apply power. Here we have a 1S schematic, so I'm going to disconnect power and I'm going to apply, uh, connect it to 1S. And the current sense can be high side or low side. Uh, as explained on the text over here. So you connect jumper, sorry, jumper one to two makes it low side, jumper two to three makes it high side. And we want low side, uh, you could do either way. And then uh, if you had multi-series, you would set up the how many series. I'm gonna disconnect that because we're not using it in multi-series mode right now. The, when you do like to use multi-series, it's wired, it's already Schematics prepared for 2S, 3S, 4S, 6S, and 8S. You can change resistors in the schematic to apply any number of series, you know, up to beyond 100 volts if you like. Um, there's only a few components that will be bearing off that high voltage. Okay, so now I'm going to boot up the EVKit GUI, and we'll see how simple it is to get started. This is the Max 17263 EVKit GUI. It shows you all the basic analog information, the cell voltage, the temperature, the current, as well as average current and average voltage for some light filtering. It, it'll show you the percentage state of charge, uh, the health of the battery, and uh, the, the full capacity of the battery. It's not configured according to this particular battery, so I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do that. I'm going to set the configuration and show you how easy it is to get the battery 
uh, particular battery setup. So because of model gauge M5EZ, you don't need to do custom characterization. Uh, it's, it's got adaptive mechanisms so it can learn the various characteristics of the battery. All lithium batteries are very diverse, they're all different, and anyway it can handle those differences without characterization. Instead what you do is you give this basic information, how big is the battery in milliamp hours, so you can usually find that written on the battery. In this case it's 2500 milliamp hours. What is your empty target voltage, which is just a function of your application. When will chips begin to shut down on your application? So we're going to choose the 3.3 volts. 3.3 and 3.4 are the most popular choices. And then the charge termination current. I'm just going to say 200 milliamps, but you probably know what you're charge terminating at, so just plug in that number. That helps it identify full. Uh, and then if you're charging your battery above 4.2, 275 volts, like a 4.3 volt charge application or 4.35 volt charge application, which are becoming more common nowadays, you should check that box. If you're charging at the more standard 4.2 volt application, you would uncheck that box. So I'm going to uncheck it. And uh, all I have to do now is save and update. So after you update it, you see, you'll see you see the percentage change, the full capacity will change to reflect your, your target, and uh, it'll begin fuel gauging from that point. Um, you can get all the basic information here. You got the analog stuff and as well as the calculated capacities and even time to empty and stuff on the left. On the bottom right, you have uh, alert configurations of various kinds. Uh, all of these are detailed in the data sheet. Um, and then you have another feature here. You have this, the graphs of what's happening in time. So if I were to start a load or uh, voltage moved, you can see it here on the graph. It's going to be a really long run graph. You know, if you've had it running for hours, you'll have hours of visual information, you can zoom in and out as well. Uh, this is the register set. Generally you won't need to poke around in here because like I say most of the important stuff for most people is on this front tab, but all the detailed registers can be found here. Uh, and then in the configuration tab there's uh, it's automatically logging everything that it reads with a time axis. So you can open it in Excel, you can graph any particular information you're interested in. You can see retroactively what happened or you can rec you can determine the performance of a, a battery cycle as long as you reached empty and uh, and then the battery selection again that's going to help you run the wizard so you can do easy again if you like there's not much else that you're going to be operating on this tab the LED configuration there's a lot of rich feature set in the LEDs besides the basics that I explained uh, there's going to be another video that will explain that in more detail but here this is how you interact with the LED feature set. So that's about all there is to show you on the EV kit GUI. Uh, one last point I'd like to make. The, the model gauge M5 easy algorithm uh, technology that we have, which greatly assists you know, designing uh, a system with battery gauge. Traditionally you had to do a long and, and tedious characterization and you had to worry about the per performance and quality of that characterization. Because the M5 algorithm is robust against battery variation, which is a necessary feature even when you have characterization to adapt well and to learn when the battery is different or changing, uh, but because it can do that well, it can handle the battery diversity. So we've tested it on 300 different battery data sets, all different batteries, not the same brand and size, and uh, that includes 3, 000, over 3,000 discharges uh, tested. Of those 3,000 discharges, 97% of the tests were within 3% error. So basically it means you should be able to expect less than 3% error most of the time running sort of blind without a custom characterization. Uh, this excludes certain conditions like heavy loads, any load that will bring the battery from full to empty faster than 4 hours, or cold temperatures, and also special chemistries like lithium iron phosphate are excluded. But those are minority conditions. Most applications last longer than four hours, and uh, cold is not generally so interesting. If you want best cold performance, you should characterize. So it's because we delivered that, especially when we combine it with the LED feature, you have a novel fuel gauge that you can make fully autonomous. You don't need an I2C interface to make use of this. You can plug it into like a dumb device, like a flashlight, which has no microcontroller, and it will count the LEDs that you've populated. It'll respond to the button which you've exposed. You don't have to talk to the chip, configure the chip, or, uh, or any other way have a digital knowledge of the chip. It's just plug and play and it figures the battery out and shows it to the user. An easy add-on to 
kind of any application without any software involvement. So that's what I have to show to you today. For further information, please go to www.maximintegrated.com slash max17263. Thank you for your time.